The DHS removes the laptop ban on airplanes, Microsoft 10 is going to block ransomware, and NotPetya is a wiper, not ransomware. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morse and this is ThreatWire for July 4th, 2017. This is your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. Happy Independence Day to my viewers in the US. Real quick, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell button to see the show as soon as it goes live and check out patreon.com slash threatwire to see how you can support the show. On to the news. First off, the Homeland Security of the United States released a fact sheet on June 28th detailing new security measures that would be taken at security checkpoints for international flights. Earlier this year, the DHS implemented a laptop ban for flights incoming to the U.S. from 10 airports in the Middle East and North Africa, including Turkey, Morocco, Jordan, Egypt, the United Arab Emirates, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and Kuwait. The ban ensured passengers could bring their cell phones on board as carry-ons, but no other devices larger than that would be admitted and would have to be checked. Some viewers of our show wrote in to explain that they had to check their laptops, but also they had to check batteries, e-readers, and game consoles such as their Nintendo DS. Now, while some may say that this is fine, it'll give us a chance to read books instead, and yeah, that's cool, they will miss the very clear threat of your devices being damaged, stolen, lost, or intercepted, and compromised. Some of you may also say, well, if you are worried about your device being compromised, you're in the wrong business. Well, I would say, tell that to my friends who do penetration testing and travel for business and carry very sensitive information on them and cannot leave their devices in other hands, even if encryption is included. Removing the hard drive or shipping the device also fall into the same problems. The DHS was considering for a short time extending this laptop ban to all incoming international flights, but that was very short-lived. According to the Homeland Security, the ban was first implemented because a threat was discovered of explosives being hidden in electronic devices. Now the DHS is removing the laptop ban, but including new enhanced security measures for incoming flights. This includes enhanced overall passenger screening, heightened screening of personal electronic devices, increased security around aircraft and passenger areas, and deploying canine screening, advanced technology, and additional pre-clearance locations. Now much of the new measures are very vague and very broad, so specifics of these are currently unknown. No clarity was given for what heightened screening of personal electronic devices mean when Homeland Security Secretary John Kerry gave a press briefing on the matter. This news surfaced just a week after a new TSA screening policy was made public describing increased screening of reading material, which could also be a privacy concern. Check the links below for more information. Microsoft just announced a slew of new protections for Windows 10 users that will be built into the operating system for all users. In the meantime, these are available through Windows 10 Insider Preview Build 16.232 for PC. All security features will be included in the Fall Creators Update, which will release in October or November of this year. So first off, Microsoft is now implementing exploit protection in the Windows Defender Security Center, even with Windows Defender Antivirus turned off. This will be available under the notification icon on the taskbar. You simply click open, then search for the Windows Defender Security Center. From there, click App and Browser Control, then find exploit protection on the list. And second, they also introduced something called Controlled Folder Access, which can be found under the Windows Defender Security Center as well. You click Virus and Threat Protection Settings, then switch Controlled Folder Access to On. This is Windows' reply to the growing threat of ransomware taking advantage of Windows machines in that it monitors changes the apps try to make to files in your protected folders. You will have the ability to blacklist or whitelist apps that are authorized to have access to controlled folders, and if an app tries to change files inside that folder and it's on the blacklist, you will get a notification about it and it'll be blocked from the attempt. Allowing applications will be a manual process unless Microsoft has already deemed them as a trusted application. Your default folders such as desktop, documents, and pictures cannot be removed from the list, but you can also add other ones to it. Network shares or map drives will also be protected, which is awesome, but variables and wildcards are not supported at this time. Microsoft will also be removing SMB version 1 from the new update, and that is a good thing. 
For this story, there seems to be a little bit of confusion across outlets about the name of the malware. Petya was ransomware that has been infecting computers since 2016. This new attack that everybody's talking about is being dubbed several different names, including Petya, Not Petya, GoldenEye, and Petya Rap. This new attack is not Petya, but it is similar. So for simplicity, I will be referring to it as Not Petya for the story. So last week, another large cyber attack created havoc across the globe as it locked down computers and demanded $300 in Bitcoin for recovery to a provided email address. This ransomware, and I say that in quotes for a reason, dubbed GoldenEye or not Petya, infected thousands of machines worldwide. This new strain of malware was taking advantage of the Eternal Blue exploit and the Eternal Romance exploit from the NSA that was leaked by shadow brokers that takes advantage of the SMB protocol vulnerability that might Microsoft has already patched. NotPetya uses two exploits along with Mimikatz to steal password credentials from other network computers even if they aren't vulnerable to the SMB issue. So by doing so, the malware can take control of command line utilities, allowing for much more than just locking down files for ransom. According to many analysts, the infection seems to stem from a Ukrainian tax accounting package called Medoc that updates itself over the air. Medoc has not claimed admission at fault at this time, but Microsoft was able to confirm that some attacks stem from an update from Medoc. So once a computer is infected, it waits for up to one hour till the computer reboots, and then it starts the encryption process held for ransom. Organizations hit include banks, airports, power utility companies, media outlets, government offices, and a lot more. Chernobyl's radiation monitoring was attacked, as well as the Cadbury Chocolate Factory, which is very important to my survival. As opposed to previous ransomware techniques, Not Petya encrypts an entire system instead of specific files by attacking the master boot record of the machine. Though we have heard this story before time and time again about ransomware, something odd took place with Not Petya. Since the ransomware specifically asked victims to email the attacker after paying bitcoins to get their files decrypted, Postio, the email company the attacker used, blocked their email accounts, so victims now have no way to contact the attacker to get decryption access. Since Postio chose to block the email account, this means that victims were not able to contact the attacker at all. So even if they did pay, and even if they could decrypt them, now they have no way. While this was a short-sighted attempt by Postio to protect their name, it also means victims are being further penalized by not patching systems by sending money to an attacker who couldn't even decrypt them. But if this seems odd to you, that's because it is. Yeah, it gets worse. So many security researchers took the email fiasco as a sign that the ransomware was not indeed ransomware at all, but it was actually for data destruction, AKA a wiper. Upon further analysis, this was confirmed as the case because the attack would not have any kind of valid decryption information that they could extract from the installation ID for each infection. Furthermore, NotPetya overwrites the master boot record instead of encrypting it. And since the MBR is crucial for data access, once it is overwritten, that data is basically gone. Now, while victims look for ways to get their data back, the original Petya creator, going by Janus on Twitter, said he or she may be able to crack the malware encryption with their private key for Petya, but this is yet to be determined. So, how do you protect yourself? You can update and patch your machines, and if your company is unable to do so, and I know a lot are, create backups of your, all your digital files. Remember 321, which is three backups, two local, and one offsite. Thank you again to all the wonderful, amazing people who contribute to patreon.com slash threatwire. If you can spare a bit of change, it all helps keep Threatwire completely independent and completely ad-free. We now have an audio-only RSS feed, we have extra content, and early access for our patrons. We might even feature your adorable fur baby, just like these ones, in a future episode. Look at all those adorable little babies. They're so cute. Remember, patrons, to share your favorite security-focused news stories in the Patreon community tab to get featured in the show. And of course, if you cannot donate, hit that subscribe button again, share this episode on your favorite social media page, and use that hashtag ThreatWire so we can see it and we might even retweet you. And with that, I am Shannon Morse, and I will see you on the internet.